here's where we had gone. We took this guy, right? And we thought, man, I have no idea what that looks like. You can't simply play the geometrical game and think, oh yeah, I know exactly what the difference of those squares is, right? Well, we just had to do some algebra with it. We knew what, <coughs> excuse me, what each of these was. Um, am I missing something off there? Did I have the modulus? No, that's okay. Yeah, that was alright. We did the difference of squares, we saw some real parts disappear, some imaginary parts disappear, and eventually once we simplified down, this is where we ended. Okay? Now, do you remember, there was a couple of extra steps, and these are crucial ones, right? They're the ones I want to re-emphasize this morning. Before we move from here to here, how did I get from that to this? Does anyone remember? Yeah, we hear it. Um, you thought of it without the I, and then you made Okay, so I had to think about like, what is this thing in terms of its boundaries? That's, that's where I was trying to go, right? So when you think about it without boundaries, the place you have to go is, by definition, by definition, the modulus of this complex number is going to be the square root of, the square root of what? The real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, right? It's, it's undoing Pythagoras. So that's why we had that zero squared, which was the real part that you were talking about, plus the xy, which is the imaginary part, right? You don't need to write the i there. Um, now that is going to be greater than one, and from there, we just get our equation that had some absolute values in it that gave us these boundaries, the familiar one on x and minus one on x. Okay, so far so good. So now, let's finish this thing off. We want to be really careful about which part of the region that we're after. And you can do some intuition. We saw, okay, we want a distance from the origin and we want it to be a big distance. That's why we guessed we want the outside. Let's confirm it, okay? So, when I test this, where am I going to put this? This is a point. Where am I going to place it into my um, working? Now, I've got, um, I've got a real part there, x equals 1, and I've got an imaginary part there, y equals a half, but where do I put those? x equals 1 and y equals a half. So I've got some choices. I can go either here or here. Like these represent the same equation, don't they? I've just evaluated it a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for this one. Good morning. I'm going to go for this one because <coughs> it will help me. You sort of um, uh, flex my complex number muscles really, and just try and get myself practicing thinking of those terms. So let's have a look at the left hand side there. Right. The left hand side is going to be equal to the modulus to i times x times y, right? So that's 1 times a half. You okay with that? So that's the modulus of half i. Now what does that mean? Tell me geometrically what that means. What's it referring to? Good morning. What is a modulus? Do you remember what the modulus is? It's the distance from the origin, right? It's the distance from 0 to that point. Where is that point? Well, that point, as it happens, is right here. It's right there. Okay. Keep in mind, this is not the distance to there, it's the distance to there. These are two different points. Okay. Once you input it in, you get a different thing. Um, that distance is just a half. Does that satisfy my inequality or not? No. It doesn't, does it? I want it to be greater than 1. It's quite clearly not greater than 1. So I say <coughs> not greater than 1. I mean, I could say less than or equal to, but all I want to know is does it satisfy my inequality or not? Okay. So therefore, I would say not in the region. Now, ordinarily... It would be probably sufficient for me to say, well, okay, if I found a spot that's not in the region, it just must be the other side, okay? But being that we're in complex number layer, we might as well just confirm by testing another point. And we already suggested this one, right? So I'm going to test z equals 1 plus 2i, right? I'm going to pop it back in here. And remember, I'm, I'm actually trying to see whether this inequality is true or not. So I don't just put it into here and say, oh, it's greater than 1. I don't know whether it's greater than 1 or not until I've done my working. Okay, so that's why I say left-hand side. So left-hand side of that inequality, right? the absolute value of i <coughs> times what? What am I putting in here? One. One times two. There's my real and imaginary part, right? And then finish the modulus. So this is the modulus to two i, which again is the distance from the origin up to two i, which is up here which is two units, right? Does that satisfy my inequality? It does, right? It is greater than one, therefore it's in the region. Okay, so from there, that's enough, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's enough numerical proof, I think, to be able to say, this is in, this is out, I'm gonna shade up here, like so. Do we have to do numerical proof 
every time? Um, you have to do some kind of demonstration of like, what, why, why am I choosing this value versus that value? If what you've got like down here is not something really obvious like it's to the right of this line or it's above this line or it's inside my circle or outside my circle. Uh, and this is not really a common case so that's why I'm going to go ahead and test. Okay. That's what I have got in the, in the first quadrant, right? And you can pretty quickly see what's going to happen all the way over here and over here. So I've got four distinct regions where points will satisfy this inequality here. Okay? 